Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and welcome to another episode of Thoughts and Musings. Well, this time I'm going to be talking about Superman Rebirth. So what can I say about Superman Rebirth? Well, it was written by Peter J. Tomasi, and it was an absolute joy reading it. Well, the first two issues, that is. I thought it was utterly fantastic. Uh, classic Superman for the ages. Uh, the morally upright and classic Superman that definitely reminds me of the post-crisis John Byrne era. I mean, this review is going to sound rather biased in this regard, as this has always been my favourite characterisation of him in the comics, and, in my opinion, the best era of the character's publication history. This paid huge homage to this period, and looks like it will continue to do so. Let it be known that I've been terribly out of the loop comics-wise over the past few years, not having re read the New 52 after the first year. Even then, I didn't read Convergence, but from what little I know of it, the pre-Flashpoint Superman made his way to the New 52 universe somehow, and has been in hiding until he feels the time is right to make himself known. However, the New 52's armoured, shitty, whingebag Superman was dying, and thus was the perfect opportunity to, in short, shoo out the clowns and replace him with the classic Superman. I mean, I'm a bit confused as to why Superman and Lois are living on Kent Farm with what appears to be their son. I didn't know any of this was happening prior to reading the comic, but that aside, after a read-through, I loved it. I love the dynamic between all of them. Lois is great, Superman of course is great, but I was really impressed the most by their son, Jonathan, or rather John Kent. I'm pleased with this because at this stage, John is going through precisely the same discovery of his powers that his father went through at his age, but having Clark there to guide him through it and for them to bond is particularly touching. The story touches on the power and continence trope, but not to the same way you know, or the same extent as, say, an early X-Men book. At the risk of sounding like an old codger, but John really is a chip off the old block. Despite having such powers and struggling to adapt to them, as well as the knowledge that his father is the man of tomorrow, he is remarkably noble, well-behaved, humble, and most of all, he's likeable. There was a lovely scene where Superman took John with him to rescue a submarine. It, you know, It's almost like a bring-your-son-to-work day. I thought it was absolutely adorable. Compare this to a petulant little shit like Damian Wayne, whose sense of entitlement dwarves Wayne Manor itself. But I digress. The artwork. Oh my goodness, what can I say about the artwork? It's utterly astounding. I mean, kudos to Jaime Mendoza and Doug Monk. They certainly made sure they retained all the classic elements of the character, but at the same time retaining a modern and updated look. This applies to not only his costume, but the use of splash pages and awe-inspiring shots of Superman. I thought it was done absolutely perfectly. They're gearing up towards a story involving the return of a 90s Superman villain, the Eradicator, so I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. Overall, I was very impressed with what I've read of this new Superman title, and I'm over the moon that they have brought back the classic Superman. Truth be told, I really didn't think DC would ever do such a thing, so I really tip my hat to them. Kudos. Kudos, DC. Superman is a character that DC sadly has not respected for the past five years, and it looks to me that now they're taking a positive step in the right direction, I can only hope that Warner Brothers get the memo that this is the Superman we need on screen, not that whinging bellend in Batman vs Superman. Overall, I'm glad I read this, and I'll wait for the trade paperback. Thank you all for listening. Uh, there'll be a Wonder Woman Rebirth review in a couple of days. Alright, take care. Let me know what you thought of the title.